maybe even Arizona, places where there are a lot of young Hispanic voters. You need young Hispanic voters to win the election as a Democratic Party. This kind of sentiment being expressed by a person who is already unpopular in said demographics is going to only further embolden people into not voting. Very important to consider. I understand the calculation that the Democratic Party is doing, where they think that, uh, you know, the, the anti-immigrant sentiment has taken hold in the minds of many, many American uh, liberals and, and right-wingers alike. And therefore, in an effort to pick off or maintain uh, some of these moderates, the suburb uh, whites that uh, formerly voted for Donald Trump but think he's, like, ruining democracy. The, the Brandon uh, regime has decided to take a right-wing heel turn. Ed O'Keefe is in Brownsville, Texas, where President Biden plans to be later today. Ed, good morning to you. Yeah, good to see you. This will be President Biden's second visit to a border town since taking office. He's expected to use the trip to blame Republicans for holding up bipartisan attempts to stem illegal border crossings. But in his own trip, President Trump is expected to point the finger right back at Biden. Under Biden, we now have the worst border in the history of the world. The only reason the border is not secure is Donald Trump and his MAGA Republican friends. There have been a record... Notice how both parties are saying that the border is fucked up and that we have to deal with it not by creating a more streamlined approach to immigration processing, but instead by uh, being more ruthless and cruel. And Biden is saying that he's going to be even crueler than Trump. No one is. No one believes him. No one. That's it. 2.4 million migrants apprehended at the border in just the past fiscal year. The president and congressional Republicans are blamed about equally for failing to come up with a solution. So as he continues pushing Republicans to act, the president is coming to Brownsville, where illegal border crossings are now down, says Chris Cabrera, who leads the local... It's fucking awesome, dude. ...local border patrol union. I'm glad, glad he's finally here, but I think uh, the timing's a little off. I mean... Just like the Democratic Party so consistently will just be like, yes, the Republicans are right, actually. But we're going to be better than them on the issue that they ran on every single year that we ran against every single year. Why in the ever loving fuck would anybody go, oh, OK. Yeah, I'm voting for the Democratic Party because they're the real racist ones. Here, they're the they're the real racist, I promise. I mean, if he would have come a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, I think it would have been a good thing to, to see that, hey, I have a problem area. Recent attempts to pass a bipartisan deal were blocked by Republicans at the urging of former President Donald Trump. I think we killed it. I think it's dead. Today, he'll be about 325 miles to the west of the president in Eagle Pass, the center of a standoff between the Republican governor, Greg Abbott, and federal officials over how to police the border. It's overkill to me. Adam Rodriguez owns a business near the park and has lived in Eagle Pass for 30 years. We're known around town and through other small towns in the area as Illegal Pass. But Rodriguez says that's unfair. We've raised our kids here, you know, and, and there's never been any criminal element. You don't have to worry about walking down the street. A key reason both presidents... Interesting. 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 It's like, but yeah, but both of the president, bo both people running for president right now are like, no, but we have to like, you know, we have to kill some migrants. Like, please. <laughs> hmm. Why do you think the Dems have changed their position? I've told you this already is because they are spineless cowards and fucking losers and actually don't really care about anything and don't have any fucking firm commitments to any positions that they claim. 
they care about every four years. This time around, they've decided they don't even, they're not even going to advocate for the opposite part. Asana only followed to say this. You're a prime example of a Nepo baby fraud. Thank you. You have owned me. In the marketplace of ideas once again. Thank you for holding me accountable, chatter. Um, you will now watch the top of the hour ad break as you try to listen to what else I have to say about how hard you owned me, but you will unfortunately only see a three minute ad break. You will, however, be able to avoid the three minute ad break if you subscribe. Right. I'll unban you so you can do that. Okay. So you can subscribe and continue to hold me accountable. That Ludwig vid is driving the DGGers wild because they won't, they don't stop posing dumb shit. Little do they understand that the more they post like this, the more people recognize that like they're insane and ruthless and come across as not normal. <laughs> like full blown psychosis shit. Paris 115S, thank you for the 521 gifted subs. Are people finally realizing that? Uh, a lot of people are. Problem is, many people already knew that. They're just like afraid. They don't want to say anything because they don't want to get the same fucking insanity. Mm. If you're feeling good, pop a titty out. I'm feeling good. And maybe. I won't stop. Hoping that I can change their minds on some issues at least. Even if it's on accident. Let's continue. Presidential candidates are coming here, of course, is because voters now say immigration and border security are a top concern. And it's House Republicans back in Washington holding up attempts to get this deal, holding up potentially the uh, a government shutdown that would begin later this week. Simply put, Nate, this issue is going to be central in the elections this year. You're right about that. Ed. President Biden had his annual physical. Yes. Um. Anyway. Some guy in one of my random DM groups despises you and he considers himself a progressive atheist and he recently linked a drama alert tweet to me to prove you're evil and a grifter. It was very funny to me. He's just an Islamophobic piece of shit. Yeah. Um, so Trump did a dueling uh, a border. Uh, Trump did a dueling border Horrible. fucking take where he had some, some wonderful moments. And so did Brandon. This is great. Because this way you get to see... You know, how far we have fallen in the Democratic Party. Because everybody I speak to says how horrible it is. Nobody explained to me how allowing millions of people from places unknown, from countries unknown, who don't speak languages. We have languages coming into our country. We have nobody that even speaks those languages. They're, they're truly foreign languages. Nobody speaks them. Yeah, they're speaking languages that nobody speaks. Mexican. Folks, believe me when I say nobody speaks Mexican. Not even the Mexicans, folks. Folks here in Brownsville and all along the border know that. We need to have their backs, your backs. I want the people to... This is so funny to me, dude. I don't know. Like, as, as a person who's covered specifically the Democratic Party, uh, but just American politics for the past 10 years, it, it, this, this is just unfortunately a, a very tragic and yet still absurdly funny moment where you got both of the people running for president sitting in front of Border Patrol agents 
and just being like, yep, we got to do something about these immigrants, man. <laughs> yeah. What happened to the harm reducers is the question I have. The harm reducers have, have <laughs> changed course and are now also doing the harm themselves, by the way. All the harm reducers that used to say, oh, I guess you don't care about transgender immigrants last time around are now like, we should literally kill the immigrants ourselves, okay? And Biden is going to do a much better job of killing the immigrants than Trump. Why don't you want to vote for him? To understand clearly what happened here. This bill was in the United States Senate, was on its way to being passed. Then it was derailed by rank and file politics, rank partisan politics. The U.S. Senate needs to reconsider this bill. And those senators who oppose it need to set politics aside and pass it on the merits, not on whether it's going to benefit one party or benefit the other party. It's about whether it benefits the American people. Didn't Obama have a bad track record on this too? Yes, he was the deporter in chief. However, the Democratic Party in the past would at least get concessions. So one thing Obama did was a classic Democratic Party proposition where he basically facilitated a, a DACA bill while simultaneously becoming even more cruel on uh, border apprehension. So um, this time around, however, because of the ratchet effect, there is no concession that the Democratic Party is even trying to get out of this. They just full-blown made a Trump bill and are desperately trying to pass it for some fucking weird reason. I would, in fact, make sure that there is, we immediately surge to the border. All those people are seeking asylum. They deserve to be heard. That's who we are. We're a nation that says if you want to flee and you're fleeing oppression, you should come. That was an executive order. The Republicans gave him nothing after he went super harsh on immigrants. I know, but at least he like, you know, he did that, right? You can point to that. We didn't even do that. Our executive orders are also on the right wing side. Donald Trump had a 16 point edge over Biden on border immigration in the fall of 2020. He has a 35 point edge now per NBC polling. Key to understand today's dueling trips. I'm willing to bet his edge is going to go even harder, by the way. Stick to the issues where you're winning, dumbass. By validating, by validating Trump's fucking border proposals, all you have done is cave, concede, and capitulate to the right-wing framing on the matter. You will never win on that front. Doesn't matter how many times I fucking repeat this, by the way, because there are dull motherfuckers in here who will never understand. They are going to refuse to understand. It is their inability to understand that allows the Democratic Party to consistently put forward these incompetent, limp dick pieces of shit that think this is going to win this time. All I got to say is John Kerry Swift Boat, okay? John Kerry. Democrats tried to present him as the real patriot. Served in the Vietnam War. He had a purple heart. What did the Republicans do? They were like, fuck no, he's gay. He's gay as hell. I bet his purple heart is fake. That's what they fucking said. They were like, oh, uh, George W. Bush didn't serve. John Kerry did. We're the real party of patriotism. No one fucking believed it. Yet that still hasn't stopped the Democratic Party from trying to, uh, you know, relitigate that same exact argument and reinforce that same exact narrative. So dumb. Democrats hope that the GOP tank and a bipartisan border bill at the Trump's direction will show Republicans are unwilling to address core issues. But as Representative Dan Crenshaw told me, Democrats are badly mistaken. If they think this is one deal falling apart is somehow going to change the entire paradigm of voting on immigration. Exactly. It's like if tomorrow the Republican Party was like, yeah, we're gay now. We're the gay party. Democrats are the homophobes. We love homosexuality. We want to do gay shit. We want to trans your children. You think a single fucking person is going to be like, yeah, actually, that's right. I'm voting for the Republican Party because they're pro-gay. 
No. For Dems, fighting immigration to something closer to a draw, like in New York 3, is a goal, and the package's failure provides at least one opening. New York 3 is actually a really good example of not to do that, because immigration is not the reason why New York 3 was won by the Democratic Party. It wasn't. The Democratic Party uh, uh, legislator there was still severely behind the Republican Party on the issue of immigration. It was abortion that actually saved him. Well, what the fuck do I know? Right? What do I know? Nothing. Oh. But immigration is kind of like the most important issue for moderate voters, so we have to talk about it. Oh, my God. All right. You don't lean into the opposing side's argument. You do not lead. You do not try to lead the conversation on an issue that you're losing. You will never be able to win that conversation. Yeah, I, I need a wiki education. <laughs> Anyway, uh, does anyone have any uh, better? Wait, let's see more. Wait, Mr. more. President let's see more. Let's see more Biden uh, takes. I love this uh, little thing that we're doing here. Matching what Biden is saying now versus matching what Biden used to say about immigration when he was running. The American people deserve. The Speaker of the House needs to put this bill on the floor because if he put it on the floor unrestricted, it would pass. The majority of Democrats and Republicans in both houses support this legislation until someone came along and said, don't do that, it'll benefit the incumbent. That's a hell of a way to do business in America for such a serious problem. We need to act. It's time for the speakers and some of my Republican friends in Congress who are blocking this bill to show a little spine, pass a bipartisan board, bipartisan, as another member, bipartisan, conservative leaders supported this, border security bill. Let's remember who we work for, for God's sake. We work for the American people. Let me... Folks here in... Your administration separated children from their parents at the border, at least 4,000 kids. You've since reversed your zero-tolerance policy, but the United States can't locate the parents of more than 500 children. So how will these families ever be reunited? Uh, children are brought here by coyotes and lots of bad people, cartels, and they're brought here and they used to use them to get into our country. We Joe Biden's like, children are being brought over by coyotes, Jack, and I'm gonna make sure that those bad people are punished. I'm gonna, well, I'm the one who wants to do it, Jack. Oh, I shouldn't say anymore. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into trouble. Oh, I'm gonna get into trouble if I keep saying it. We now have as strong a border as we've ever had. We're over 400 miles of brand new wall. You see the numbers, and we let people in, but they have to come in legally, and they come in through. But merit. how will you reunite these kids you, with their families, Mr. President? Let me just tell you, they built cages. You know, they used to say, "I built the cages," and then they had a. It's true. Look, 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 look. Notice how he's very cleverly, and uh, he used to do this during the, the d during his tenure, uh, all the fucking time, where he was like, "I didn't build the cages. Obama did," and that was true. Obama had built the cages. Look how good that did. Trump used them. So did Obama. But. A picture in a certain newspaper, and it was a picture of these horrible cages, and they said, look at these cages. President <laughs> I like that he's saying these horrible cages, like, like saying that when Obama does it, it's bad, but when I do it, it's good. Which, again, idiotic, and therefore very dumb for you to try to argue with these fucking idiots. Or even dumber, to try to agree with them. President Trump built them, and then it was determined they were built. 
in 2014. That was him. Do you they have a plan cages. to reunite the kids? Yes, with we're their families? working on it very. We're, we're trying very hard. But a lot of these kids come out without the parents. They come over through cartels and through coyotes and through gangs. Vice President Biden, let me bring you into this conversation. Quick response and then another question to you. These 500 plus kids came with parents. They separated them at the border to make it a disincentive to come to begin with. Bay, real tough. We're really strong. And guess what? They cannot, it's not coyotes didn't bring them over. Their parents were with them. They got separated from their parents. And it makes us a laughing stock and violates every notion of who we are as a nation. Let me ask you a follow-up question. They did it. We changed the policy. Your response they to did that? It. We, we changed. did not. They built the cages. The they, who, who built the cages, let's, Joe? Let's talk about what who we're built talking the cages, about. Joe? Let's talk about what we're talking about. What happened? Parents were ripped, their kids were ripped from their arms and separated. And now they cannot find over 500 of the sets of those parents, and those kids are alone. Nowhere to go. Nowhere. Isn't this the one where he gave, he almost gave Brandon COVID too? That's his flu game, dog. That's Trump's flu game. <laughs> to go. It's criminal. It's criminal. Let me ask Kristen, you about I will say this. They went down. We brought reporters, everything. They are so well taken care of. They're in facilities that were so clean. But some of them haven't been reunited good. But just families. ask one question. Who built the cages? I'd love you to ask him that. Who built the cages? Let me ask about your immigration policy, Mr. Vice President. The Obama administration did fail to deliver immigration reform, which had been a key promise during the administration. It also presided over record deportations as well as family detentions at the border before changing course. So why should voters trust you with an immigration overhaul now? Well, they shouldn't. They shouldn't have. But we did anyway, because harm reduction, right? Because it made a mistake. It, made too, it took too long to get it right. It took too long to get it right. I'll be president. I'm glad that he's reversing course on that. He's now getting it right. The United States, not vice president of the United States. And the fact is, I've made it very clear. Within 100 days, I'm going to send to the United States Congress a pathway to citizenship for over 11 million undocumented people. And all Damn. Dude, wasn't that sick when we did that? Mass amnesty for 11 million undocumented immigrants living on uh, inside of U.S. borders. It was pretty fire when he did that, honestly. I do love, I do love a guy who, who, you know. What is this? Oh, oh, dude, we're going way back in time now. I do love a, an honest leader that follows through on his campaign promises. You know what I mean? All of those so-called dreamers, those DACA kids, they're going to be immediately certified again to be able to stay in this country and put on a path to citizenship. The idea that they are being sent home by this guy and they want to do that is they go into a country they've never seen before. I can imagine you're five years old, your parents are taking you across the, the Rio Grande River and it's, and, it's, and it's illegal. And you say, oh, no, Mom, leave me here. I'm not going to go with you. They've been here. Many of them are model citizens. Over 20,000 of them are first responders out there taking care of people during this crisis. We 95% of approval for what he's saying, by the way. 95%. So much so that even fucking Donald Trump was like, eh, I don't know about this DACA stuff, guys. Like, eh, I don't know. President Obama was known as the deporter in chief, removing more than 3 million people. To Hold on, let's finish this. We owe them. We owe them. President Kristen, he had reaction. eight years to do what he said he was going to do. And I've changed without having a specific. We got rid of catch and release. We got rid of a lot of horrible things that they put in and that they lived with. But he had eight years. He was vice president. He did nothing except build cages to keep children in. Vice President Wrong. Biden, your response. The catch and release, you know what he's talking about there? If in fact you had a family came across and they were arrested, they in fact were given a date to show up for their hearing. They were released. And guess what? They showed up for a hearing. And this is the first president in the history of the United States of America that's anybody seeking asylum has to do it in another country. That's never happened before in America. That's never happened before in America. You come to the United States and you make your case that I seek asylum based on the following 
on the following premise, why I deserve it under American law. They're sitting in squalor on the other side of the river. President Trump, your response, uh, so 30 important. seconds, and then we'll move It on. just shows that he has no understanding of immigration or the laws. Catch and release is a disaster. A murderer would come in, a rapist would come in, a very bad person would come in. We would take their name. We have to release them into our country. And then you say they come back. Less than 1% of the people come back. We have to send ICE out and Border Patrol out to find them. We would say, come back in two years, three years. We're going to give you a court case. You need Perry Mason. We're going to give you a court case. When you say they... Why are we rewatching this? I wonder why we're rewatching this at, at the eve of uh, Joe Brandon basically uh, going to the border today uh, alongside Donald Trump and offering the identical sentiment that Donald Trump is expressing here. But this time, this time from the right. Not only did he obviously never follow through on his promises on fixing immigration, he then turned around and has now completely taken the position that Donald Trump had four years prior when he was running against him. There is no, there is no better indication that the harm reduction argument is, is just a fucking ridiculous thing to claim when you are the one who is trying to do the fucking harm yourself. Come back. They don't come back, Joe. Yeah. They never come back. Only the really, I hate to say this, but those with the lowest IQ, they might come back. Okay, President Trump. Yeah, he keeps saying that, except like 90% of them do actually attend their court proceedings. So uh, he's a piece of shit. So uh, that's why he actually started adding that, like, only the dumbest ones come back. Single most important thing we can do for our economy, for America's future, is pass immigration reform now. It's the single most significant thing we can do. I heard for too damn long about how this was going to bankrupt us that Social Security was going to take a nosedive and so on. You heard it all the last six, seven years. Well, guess what? Guess what? It's a game changer financially for the country. During the Biden-Obama um, um, administration, Trump campaigned made me on Build Thank That you. Wall. I did, no. The Obama-Biden administration. Trump campaigned on... Um, build that wall. Are you willing to tear that wall down? No, I'm, there will not be another foot of wall constructed on my administration. No. Wait, no. No, wait, did he say that? Wait, what? That's so weird. Hold on one second. Hmm. What a wait a minute. When is this one? Wait, what? Since that's since 2021. Wait, I'm sorry. What? Wait, hold on. What? That's what is happening. What is did they does Biden know this? Does Biden know that? Wait. Biden says he had to use Trump era funds for the border wall. Asked if Barry's work. He says no. Wait a minute. Okay. Hold on. Wait, what? Uh, I, I don't understand. October 6, 2023, Biden resumes border wall construction. Thank you so much. I'll answer one question on the border wall. The border wall, the money was appropriated for the border wall. I tried to get them to reappropriate, to redirect that money. They didn't. They wouldn't. And in the meantime, there's nothing under the law other than they have to use the money for what it was appropriate. Oh, I, I don't get it. I don't understand. But, but right here, he's saying we're not going to say we're not going to put another inch on the wall. Wait, what? Number two, what I'm going to focus on, and the, and your, uh, uh, the fact is that somebody in this group written a lot about the border. 
Um, I'm going to make sure that we have border protection, but it's going to be based on making sure that we use high tech capacity to deal with. It. Yeah, this is the other part of it, which was the always like, we're just going to put lasers, dog. Drastic Wait. action to address the migrant crisis as illegal crossings surge right now at the U.S.-Mexico border. It says it will waive 26 federal laws and regulations to build more barrier walls in one Texas border county. A reminder, this is what then-candidate Joe Biden said about border walls back in 2020. There will not be another foot of <laughs> wall constructed on my administration. But this is now when the situation has watching a four month old video. Yeah, it, because the entire point is the entire point I'm trying to demonstrate to you is that Biden went from no border walls to build the fucking wall. I mean, I'm sorry. Pretty wild, pretty wild stuff. And at the ports of entry, what that's where the all the bad stuff is. Uh, what about and, the land confiscations? What about the land confiscations? And, and, stop, done, over. Wait, no more land confiscations? Wait. But, but I don't, but I don't understand why, what? We're not going to do it. Withdraw the, 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 the lawsuits. We're out. We're not going to confiscate the land. Wait, what? What do you say to the silent majority who see you as an extension of President Obama, representing a time when many felt like they weren't heard, they weren't seen, people who feel like this country is trending too far left? And I have one more part to this question I want to ask you. In your first 100 days as president, what will you do to create a pathway to citizenship for many undocumented immigrants? That is a big issue for the AAPI community. So for the record, I just want to point to, point to something here. Um... The 118, uh, uh, what is it, million, billion, whatever the fucking, what is the proposal? How big is the proposal? Uh, $118 billion border bill, which also featured aid for Ukraine and Israel originally. The billion one is the uh, is the aid. That's why I was like, because it has like the Ukraine and Israel aid in it. But that original proposal, for the record, just so you understand, that proposal features additional funds for continuing border wall construction. $60 billion in military aid for Ukraine, $14 billion for Israel, $4.8 billion for Indo-Pacific region, you know, Taiwan. 10 billion in humanitarian assistance for Ukraine, Israel, Gaza, among other places. 2.3 billion in refugee assistance inside the U.S. 20 billion for improvements to U.S. border security. 2 billion for domestic uranium enrichment. Um, there's also, wait, hold on, not the emergency uh, authority, but there is also funding in this, which the PBS article is not uh, detailing, but there is funding in this, in the, I guess, this part, the 20 billion for border security part that directly has border wall funding in it. Just so you understand. Listen, there's always money in the banana stand for uh, doing reactionary right-wing politics, okay? More war, more borders, more nonsense just saying community as you know 1.7 million face deportation threats another hundred thousand are young people who are affected by the the daca program so two parts for you what are you going to do to be more visible and what do you say to the folks that think you're just going to be president obama 2.0 and what wait what he only built half an inch fake news media somehow trump will lose to this guy again lamont politicians have to compromise can you believe it dude you went through like you went through this is you are no different than a, a trump supporter okay you literally said fake news media he only built half an inch 
then said Trump is going to lose to this guy again, which uh, he very well might. Okay. But that doesn't actually address any of the things that we're talking about currently. Politicians have to compromise. Can you believe it? You offered cover to Biden, basically going against all of his promises. So why did you why did you vote for him last time then? If this is what you wanted already. I don't understand. This is not compromise at all. This is just pure hypocrisy in display. <laughs> it's also bad because it it completely completely feeds into the narrative like it it basically calcifies the narrative that the border issue is one of national security concerns okay it's, it's jover on that front you have completely caved to the right it's it's a manufactured narrative built on lies and now the democratic party and all the mainstream organs are basically repeating it What are you going to do about immigration right when you get in office? We look, I'm very proud to serve with Barack and it's one of the great honors of my life. I thought he was a great president, but even he acknowledges we can't go back to what it was. We have to go back and build back better. And so I have a program that is significantly different and builds upon where we left off and tries to undo the damage that Trump has done. Number one. Number two. I think he did that. I campaigned from home about Biden hiding in his cellar. Well, the truth of the matter is over 200 million people have watched my me on television and they've watched. And the more of that Barack, the more of that, excuse me, Donald Trump is out, the worse he does. I think it's wonderful. He goes out. He <laughs> goes, I'm being a bit facetious because it's dangerous what he's doing with these rallies. But look at his numbers have dropped through the floor. They've dropped through the floor, number one. Number two, I have done, I, I've gone out responsibly. I go out and I wear this mask when I go out. And when I go out responsibly okay, okay, and I don't, on, immigration plan. don't hold rallies because the experts and the scientists about social distancing and wearing masks, I never fail to do. Now, one day, on day one, I'm going to send the legislative immigration reform bill to Congress to provide a roadmap to citizenship for 11 million undocumented immigrants who contribute so much to this country, including 1.7 million, 1.7 million AAPI. My immigration policy is built around keeping families together, modernizing the immigration system by keeping families unification and diversity as pillars of our immigration system, which it used to be, ending Trump's cruel and humane policy at the border to Damn, dude. What? That's crazy. Yo, I want to vote for this guy, bro. He's got the smoke. Damn, dude. This guy, this guy's going to defeat the current administration. The current administration is running on this fucking like anti-immigrant slant, talking about how they need to fix this crisis at the border and shit. Where's this guy? I want to vote for this guy. He seems, he seems like a young whippersnapper. In comparison to the fucking dying corpse that that's currently running the the country, who two different guys? I mean, their faces don't even look the same. Come on, different guy, right? Must be. To rip children from their mother's arms, take immediate action to protect dreamers, including the more than one hundred thousand eligible dreamers from East and South Asia. Come Rescinding on. the un-American Muslim ban immediately. Restoring refugee admission in line with the values and historic leadership of our country. Re refugee ad admission? Wow. This guy certainly didn't fucking implement incredibly, cr continue the incredibly cool, uh, cruel Title 42 provisions and, and also simultaneously used it and is now planning on using a separate executive order to basically not even to do away with title 42 and just simply uh, ban asylum seekers from coming into the country. That's not the guy, right? Raising the target to a minimum of 125,000 people a year in my first year. 
He's cut it down to 15. The average has been 95,000 a year. Working with Congress to establish a bipartisan legislation to ensure a minimum admission of 95,000 refugees. That's who we are. That's how my great great grandfather, great three, four greats back got here. <laughs> he got in a coffin ship in the Irish Sea, never knowing whether he's going to make it. And he made it to the United States of America in, in 1848 when the British were anyway. So streaming, streamlining naturalization process, make it easier for qualified green card holders to move through the, uh, his backlog. And by the huh. He's really spitting here, dude. This is an objectively pro-immigration agenda. Objectively. What happened? What happened to that guy? Huh. You running for president? I'd like to hear from him. By the way, he just indicated he ended H-1B visas the rest of this year. That will not be in my administration. Hey, NBC News. Huh. Huh. We're going to talk about immigration now, gentlemen, and we're going to talk about family. We already covered this. Um, huh. As someone who works in political analysis for the left Dems, I promise the current narrative isn't even proven to work to persuade people. I don't know how it became their strat. I know. I know it is not persuasive and it's not working and it's not going to work. And I'm telling you, this is a uh, wee woo, wee woo speculation alert. Okay. But this number, the 35 point edge is going to increase. Okay? Trump currently has a 35-point edge on Biden on immigration. 35 points. I'm willing to bet that number is going to increase. I could be wrong, but I believe that that number is going to get even higher. Why? Because the Trump administration, the Trump campaign, Trump administration, Trump campaign is going to use this against them and be like, see, even he recognizes it. And you can't trust these guys to fix the problem like I fixed it when I was president. That's what he's going to say. And why shouldn't he? <laughs> why shouldn't he say that? He'd be a fucking idiot not to. So dumb. So, so, so fucking dumb. And there's even somehow dumber people in this chat that come in here to fucking defend Biden's right-wing anti-immigrant sentiment. Thinking that this is actually a brilliant 5D chess move. Masterful gambit, sir. This decaying corpse is actually doing white boy swag. By adopting the right-wing position on immigration, he will surely win over more voters and not alienate those who are already iffy on voting for him. You know, younger demographics of voters who do care about this sort of thing, who do want a progressive immigration policy, completely going against, completely going against his prior narrative. The worst part about it is that he doesn't need to do this on immigration. He needs to shut the fuck up and not talk about immigration at all. And if asked about immigration, he needs to say, the process is cruel and unusual. We, have, we are a nation of immigrants, just like he has said before. Okay? That's what he needs to keep saying. Virtual meal, thank you for the 5 2 one give the subs. But he ain't doing that. He needs to be talking about abortion every goddamn day of the fucking week. Why do you think they took his shit to shift? Because I don't think it's just them being callous. It's better for capital to have this. Oh, they took the shift because they're fucking losers, dog. What do you mean? It's better for capital in general to like have a reactionary approach to immigration so that there's never any pathway to citizenship and documentation for those who are already here and are coming in here. But the reason why they're doing this is because they're stupid and they're desperate. They're dumb and they're desperate. Oh. <sighs> They're doing it because they want to maintain the suburbs. 
okay, they have a lot of white voters who swapped over or consider themselves moderate who are incredibly reactionary on the issue of immigration. But what they fail to consider is that those guys are voting for Brandon because he outperforms Biden on maintaining democracy. Maintaining democracy. It's a key issue for a lot of these guys, okay? For older white men who think Donald Trump's behavior is unacceptable. But what he doesn't realize is the more he hammers on the narrative that he's going to actually fucking protect the borders or whatever, the more those guys go, wait a minute, but Trump is the protector of the borders. Maybe I don't care about uh, the, the Trump being a... Maybe I don't care about Trump uh, refusing to be... Uh, maybe I don't care about Trump being a fascist after all, actually. Because if you don't talk about that, if you don't consistently hammer on the narrative that you will defend democracy, Trump is going to destroy democracy, and you start talking about an issue that Trump will always defeat you on, well, you're going to lose. So I think that it's going to backfire and cause those moderate voters to shift rightward again, directly feeding them back into the hands of Trump. It's so fucking dumb. I want to watch more uh, Brandon takes. I understand my predecessor's legal past today. So here's what I would say to Mr. Trump. Instead of playing politics with this issue, instead of telling members of Congress to block this legislation, join me or I'll join you. to save others. And we urge, we urge folks to listen to the warnings from the local officials, listen to them. He's talking about the fires I here. I Neanderthal friends uh, who are still Climate on the ground. Change. You'll see in the midst of 20 homes that are just totally destroyed, Texas alone, over $13 billion, $13 billion in three years in disaster relief after fires and winter storms across the state. And when disasters strike, there's no red state or uh, he's been a great partner. I also want to thank Mayor, 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 Mayor Cowan for his partnership by seven mayors and cities and towns across South Texas. Four county judges here from across the state. I told the county judge that I used to be a county official. It's the hardest job in American politics. You know why? They think you can do everything you don't have the budget. So, Carol Alvadero. Time to act. It's long past time to act. Uh, and all the other local officials that are here today, I want to say thanks. Folks, it's real simple. It's time to act. It's long past time to act. He's talking about immigration now. Let's hear what he has to I say. I just received a briefing from the Border Patrol at the border, as well as immigration and enforcement, asylum officers, and they're all doing incredible work under really tough conditions, really tough conditions. They told me what, they, what, what you already know and we already know. They desperately need more resources. Say it again, they desperately need more resources, need more agents, more officers, more judges, more equipment in order to secure our border. Folks, it's time for us to move on this. We can't wait any longer. Folks, on my first day as president, I introduced a bill I sent to Congress, a comprehensive plan to fix the broken immigration system and to secure the border. But no action was taken. Then months ago, my team began a serious negotiation in a bipartisan group of senators, Democrat leading conservative Republicans and de progressive Democrats. And it resulted in a compromise. Nope, no progressive Democrats. That's fucking bullshit. That bill that he's talking about, the second bill that he's talking about, the, the recent one, the funding bill for Israel and Ukraine, that one is just pure right wing. Nothing left wing here on that front. That's the reason why I showed you what Brandon was saying when he was running for president last time. Just so you understand how different his approach to this immigration stuff is now. Motherfucker was like, day one, we're fixing this. America is a nation of immigrants. Hitting the all the old school. Hitting all the old school lines that Democrats all... push for. Here. It's been essential to America. Let's end our... Immigration has always been essential to America. Let's end our exhausting war over immigration. 
For more than 30 years, politicians have talked about immigration reform, and we've done nothing about it. It's time to fix it. On day one of my presidency, I kept my commitment and sent a comprehensive immigration bill to the United States Congress. If you believe we need to secure the border, pass it because it has a, a lot of money for high tech. Yes, dude, we'll watch your new Amon Animations video so you don't have to click away, okay? Yes, we will watch it. Remember this classic Sean pose? I'm all for people enjoying Trump leaving, but enjoying Biden coming in is a worrisome sign to me. Enjoying knowing that America will have a $15 minimum wage, a much more robust Medicare system, an actual plan for climate change, etc., is worrisome to you? Thinking, that is. <laughs> Dude, listen. This is why I tell you to be a leftist if you just want to be right. How so? All I'm doing is reading his website. So unless you think he just lied about every policy on there. <laughs> Guys. That's, I mean, he couldn't have fucking foreseen this. I mean, come on. How could this guy have, how could this guy have foreseen this? That he would. Well, so what? You're telling me that that's what politicians do? Just sit there and lie? That's crazy. Well... Biden actually did have one solution that's different this time around. As far as I understand, he decided not to even have an issues page this time. So. So that's good. Yeah. You know, no promises made means no promises kept. Phenomenal, phenomenal move. <laughs> Pinos, progressives in name only. That's funny. That's so dumb. But yeah. I urge all of the debate lords in my chat. I know many of you do not care about the issues themselves, right? Many of you don't. I get it. It's boring and lame to care about issues. Why would you? You just want to simply masquerade as someone who wins arguments and someone who is prescient. Well, if you want to fucking win arguments and come across as like knowledgeable, then being on the left side of most issues is, is probably going to give you the most accuracy. So even if you only care about coming across like you're right all the time, be a leftist. Border security. If you believe in a pathway to citizenship, pass it. Over 11 million undocumented folks, the vast majority of here, overstaying visas. Pass it. We can actually, if you actually want to solve a problem, I've sent a bill to take a close look at it. We have to also have to get at the root problem of why people are fleeing, particularly the, to our southern border from Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. The violence, the corruption, the gangs, the political instability, hunger, hurricanes, earthquakes, natural disasters. When I was president, my president, when I was vice president, the president asked me to focus on providing help needed to address the root causes of migration. And it helped keep people in their own countries instead of being forced to leave. The plan was working, but the last administration decided it was not worth it. I'm restoring the program and asked Vice President Harris to lead our diplomatic effort to take care of this. I have absolute confidence to get the job done. Now look, if you don't like my plan, 
let's at least pass what we all agree on. Congress needs to pass legislation this year to finally secure protection for dreamers. The young people who have only known America as their home. And permanent protection for immigrants who are here on temporary protective status who came from countries beset by man-made and natural-made violence and disaster. As well as a pathway to citizenship for farm workers who put food on our tables. Look, immigrants have done so much for America during this pandemic and throughout our history. The country supports immigration reform. We should act. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC. Damn, dog. What's happening here, bro? What's going on here? I don't get it. Stark difference. Do you see the clear cut difference, by the way, the contrast in the rhetoric back then? Compromise bill. It's the toughest set of border security reforms we've ever seen in this country. It's pretty bad. Damn, bro. He's trying to put the toughest border security reforms we've ever seen in this country. Basic. With this deal, we could hire 1,500 additional border security agents, 1,500 additional officers and officers, and between ports of entry. For the last four years, staffing has been roughly that, flat, just flat. Agents working overtime, spending long hours patrolling the border, making major sacrifices. And I know it takes a big toll on them and their families. That's why in December I signed a bill finally getting Border Patrol agents, what I've been pushed by and reminded by the congressman, overtime pay they deserve. And finally getting overtime pay. I, I mean, it's ridiculous it took this long. It was a long past time, and I was proud to do it. But we need to do more. It's time to step up. It's time to step up, provide them with significantly more personnel and capability. We also need more immigration judges to help handle the backlog. There are two million cases, backlog of two million cases. This bipartisan deal would provide funding for 100 more immigration judges immediately. It would also establish new efficient and fair process for the government to consider asylum claims for those arriving on our border. Today, the process to get a decision on an asylum claim takes five to seven years. Now, you all know it down here, but the people around the country don't understand it. It's far too long. You come in, you say, you say I have a credible fear, and, and we've changed that standard to make it hard. We want to change to make it harder. And what happens? You say, well, okay, you can come in the country, but come back in five to seven years, maybe as many as eight years, and you'll get a hearing from before a judge to determine whether you can stay. This will encourage more people. This encourages more people to come to the country. <clears throat> if they get by the first, say they got another five, seven, eight years before they have to do anything because they know they cannot handle the caseloads quickly and they'll be able to stay in this country in the meantime. With new policies in this bill, in addition of 4,300 additional asylum officers, we'll be able to reduce that process to less than six months. That would have a serious deterrent effect on those coming north. When, 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 when the criminal gangs say, we'll get you north, what's 8,000 bucks? They say, no, wait, let me get this straight. I'm going to go north. Remember, he was like, no, those are actually children coming with their parents, not with coyotes. Not with coyotes. Now he's like, them coyotes are bringing the, the Mexicans over the border wall. It's going to cost me six, eight, probably more closer to eight, I guess, thousand dollars equivalent. And I'm going to get there. And in six months, they may be able to get rid of me. I don't know, man. Six months, seven years, two different things. The person who's thinking about entering the United States understands the cases to be decided in a few weeks or months instead of five to seven years. They're less likely to come in the first place. They're <clears throat> not going to pay the cartels thousands of dollars to make that journey. Knowing that, it will be turned around quickly. Look, then we also need more cutting edge inspection machines to detect and stop fentanyl from entering the United States of America. A year ago, I stood at the border in El Paso, and I watched these machines at work. They were able to detect everything from fentanyl to weapons to people being smuggled in cargo containers. 
This, this compromise bill would provide an additional four, three, four hundred and twenty-four million dollars. Notice how one hundred more of these machines. Notice how any of the fucking compromise, like, like on the on the side of the Democratic Party, is still about apprehension and detention. The only aspect of this that is like even somewhat progressive is like hiring more judges for immigration processing. But the entire argument revolves around the entire argument itself revolves around immigration being a matter of national security, a national security issue. It could save lives in the process. This compromise legislation will also give me as president or any of the next president emergency authority to temporarily shut down the border between ports of entry when the numbers of immigrants and migrants, excuse me, overwhelm the border, starting straining the Border Patrol's ability to process them. At the same time, at our legal ports of entry, like here in Brownsville, we're making investments in infrastructure. My bipartisan infrastructure law is going to provide nearly four billion new dollars to boost security, to ease waiting times at land and ports of entry like Brownsville. And I want to thank again Congressman Gonzalez for helping me get that through and get that passed in the, in the law. That you get the money for the, for example, that's how you got the money for the Gateway Bridge from that fund. Folks, the bipartisan border security deal is a win for the American people. And it's a win for the people of Texas. And it's fair for those who legitimately have a right to come here to begin with. It's a win for the people of Brownsville. And I believe that's why the Border Patrol Union endorsed it. I believe that's why the National Chamber of Commerce, the National Chamber of Commerce endorsed it, not known as the Democratic Organization with a capital D. Look, and that's why the Wall Street Journal endorsed it as well. This is a truly bipartisan initiative. That's why the bipartisan... No, dog, they endorse it because it's right wing. They endorsed it because it is literally the type of bill that Trump would have passed almost identical. Like this is a Trump bill. Okay. And Trump would try to pass his bill. If he gave a shit about bills at all. While simultaneously saying like Mexicans are rapists and that's why we got to do it. Okay. And every democratic party member would correctly be like this bill is insane this is awful and trump said mexicans are rapists we are a nation of immigrants but when brandon is in charge everyone shuts the fuck up bipartisanship me is meaningless if you are going to literally pass a right-wing bill dog what the fuck do you mean and the only saving grace of this is the fucking tea party caucus that's like, nah, we're way more racist, and also Trump doesn't want us to pass this. It's unbelievable, dude. Must watch Lip Talk Copium, Gaslight. I'm committed for what? For why? Make no mistake, after a strong grassroots movement with viral videos from Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and national coverage and encouragement from mainstream media sources like Joy Reid, the vote uncommitted movement only illustrated President Biden's strength within the Democratic Party. As my friend Jose said, it was really like... The lesson to be learned here, sometimes life just isn't fair, kiddo. <laughs> Purposes. 11% of Michigan primary voters were uncommitted in 2012, with 174,000 of them voting for President Obama, who went on to win Michigan's Electoral College delegates. Although there were 13% of Michigan primary voters who were uncommitted in 2024, 617,000 votes were cast for President Biden. 617 compared to President Obama's 174. Biden has no viable competition on that ballot. Voters came out in full force to show their full support for our president. The Democratic base stands behind President Biden. I stand behind President Biden. I'm not asking you to vote for him. I am asking that you get educated on both likely candidates and their stance on the issues that you say you care about. There are several very- Wait, what? Okay. Immigration.
Yeah, Obama won Michigan by almost half a million votes. The Democratic Party first lost Michigan by an incredibly slim margin. And then won Michigan by 150,000 votes. The fact that 100,000 people in the fucking Democratic primary were like, we're, we're Democratic Party voters. We're not voting for you if you don't fucking fix this shit. The fact that that's something that just the fact that that's something that just write off is so insane. Anyway, <clears throat> Chad hates Biden more than R slash conservative. Yeah, why the fuck would R slash conservative hate Biden? He's literally trying to pass a right wing immigration bill, and he's conducting a genocide in Israel. Both are incredibly right wing conservative positions. You are basically telling on yourself. If you, if you think that that is like any testament whatsoever, you're making my argument for me. The fuck do you mean? South Texas Alliance of Cities endorsed it. Folks, <clears throat> I didn't get I didn't get everything I wanted in that compromise bipartisan bill, but neither did anybody else. A compromise is part of the process. That's how democracy works. That's how it's supposed to work. Compromise is a very positive step on a critical issue for the country, all those issues for the country. And folks here in Brownsville and all along the border know that. We need to have their backs, your backs. I want the people to understand clearly what happened here. This bill was in the United States Senate, was on its way to being passed, then it was derailed by rank and file politics, rank partisan politics. The U.S. Senate needs to reconsider this bill, and those senators who oppose it need to set politics aside and pass it on the merits, not on whether it's going to benefit one party or benefit the other party. It's about whether it benefits the American people. It's what the American people deserve. The Speaker of the House needs to put this bill on the floor because if he put it on the floor unrestricted, it would pass. The majority of Democrats and Republicans in both houses support this legislation until someone came along and said, don't do that, it'll benefit the incumbent. That's a hell of a way to do business in America for such a serious problem. We need to act. Why do you act like you don't understand what that person is saying? You sound like a center-right conservative commentator. I sound like a center-right conservative commentator. If you can find one singular center-right conservative commentator that actually uncritically says that America is a nation of fucking immigrants and these border proposals are incredibly reactionary, I'll just quit. You have to be delusional. We're not talking about party politics here. We're just talking about actual issues. I don't know why people are so fucking predisposed to only doing team sports when we're talking about politics that you just like lose sight of that. But the fact that you're losing sight of the issues themselves just because a fucking democratic ghoul is advocating for it is the reason why nothing good will ever happen in this motherfucking country. Completely missing the point. I'm literally talking to my mother. What? Then fucking leave and get your mother to come watch the show instead you're telling me that your mother is literally fucking saying the democratic party's reactionary position on immigration is actually causing her to second guess whether she should vote for the democratic party or not is that what your mother is saying maybe your mother is saying that at the top of the hour there's a three-minute ad break she sounds a lot like a hassan head Maybe she's already subscribed, so she won't see the ads at the top of the hour. You won't either, because you are also subscribed, but it seems like you haven't really fucking listened to anything that I've said uh, in the time frame that you have subscribed. If you think that this is, like, out of pocket, go back 10 years prior, and you will see the same exact commentary that I've, uh, I've actually championed 
With respect to the Democratic Party, I've routinely criticized Obama's failures on immigration, for example. Why would you turn around and admit that, like, your parents actually failed, even though they themselves actually have a decent understanding of the world, I guess, if they are, uh, you know, identical in my position? Keep going, champ. You're doing an amazing job. Brandon definitely is clocked out. Now, political. Biden will stop the border wall and loosen immigration again. Where's that chatter who said I'm like her, uh, like their mother now? It's time for the speakers and some of my Republican friends in Congress who are blocking this bill to show a little spine. Pass a bipartisan board, bipartisan, as no go remember, bipartisan. Conservative leaders supported this. Border security bill. Let's remember who we work for, for God's sake. We work for the American people. Let me end with this. I understand my predecessor's an eagle pass today. So here's what I would say to Mr. Trump. Instead of playing politics with this issue, instead of telling members of Congress to block this legislation, join me, or I'll join you in telling the Congress to pass this bipartisan border security bill. We can do it together. You know and I know it's the toughest, most efficient, most effective border security bill this country has ever seen. So instead of playing politics with the issue, why don't we just get together and get it done? Let's remember who the heck we work for. We work for the American people, not the Democratic Party, the Republican Party. We work for the American people. And let's remember who we are. We're the United States of America. Now, no, I mean this. Think about this. There's nothing, nothing beyond our capacity. Nothing. Yeah, we can unite together and kill immigrants, both of us, on both sides. Everybody wants to do it. Let's get united, Jack. Build the wall. Say it with me. Build the wall. Build the wall. If you look at uh, Arizona, they haven't done anything there. Department of Pass, as well as you could have. I think he understands war, because that's what you're in. You're in a war. And William Mike Gorby, you know who he is, and he's been fantastic. It's just an incredible group that you've put together, fortunately. Uh, I might ask uh, Brandon to say a couple of words, because right at the beginning, we were, uh, we were into it. We saw what was happening, and the governor was there, and then he really, he really stepped it up. It's been amazing. Uh, I came when I was lucky enough to receive his endorsement. I endorsed him also, and uh, very proudly endorsed him. And uh, a lot of things have happened in the last little while, but this is an incredible operation. Uh, Brandon, would you like to say a couple of words, please? Absolutely. Thank you, sir. President, thank you. Thank you. Uh, sir, I, I want you to know your agents, my agents, they're mad as hell. Absolutely Your mad agents. that President Biden went to Brownsville, Texas, rather than going to Arizona, rather than going to San Diego, California, rather than coming to Eagle Pass, Texas, which has been the epicenter. What President Trump has seen right here is he's seen how his policies have worked, but he's also seen how he can expand upon those policies once he takes goes back into the White House. He has seen how Governor Abbott has been able to use his policies to secure this specific area, the epicenter of the last two years of the illegal border crisis that we have had to endure. And your agents, President, they are pissed. Border Patrol agents are upset that we cannot get the proper policy that is necessary to protect human life, to protect American citizens, to protect the people that are crossing the border illegally, we want to protect them as well. And we can't do that because President Biden's policies continue to invite people to cross here. Thank goodness we have a governor like Governor Abbott. Thank goodness we have somebody that's willing to run for President of the United States, forgo everything else that he's been doing to serve the American people. President, thank you. God damn, bro. Johnny Sins uh, the, does. Uh, Reports have come out, and we've been covering them, and everybody's been. And I Gay porn as well. spoke to the parents of an incredible young lady, and you, you saw her the other day. You saw what happened the other day in Georgia. 
and the parents are devastated. They're incredible people. But this is a Joe Biden invasion. This is a Biden invasion over the past three years. I call him Crooked Joe because he's crooked. He's a terrible president, the worst president our country's ever had, uh, probably the most incompetent president we've ever had. But it's uh, allowing thousands and thousands of people to come in from China, Iran, Yemen, the Congo, Syria, and a lot of other nations. Many nations are not very friendly to us. He's transported the entire columns of uh, fighting-aged men, and they're all at a certain age, and you look at them and say, they, they look like warriors to me. Something's going on that's bad. Now the United States is being over. They look like warriors. Oh my God, he's so fucking racist. Honestly, it's pretty great. Uh, it's pretty great that Biden is like agreeing with Trump on the underlying premise that like immigration is a is a genuine problem that we, only he can solve. You know, with a bipartisan bill that's just right wing. It's pretty sick. Yeah. It's pretty cool that Joe Biden asked this guy's party to co uh to basically sign the bill. Begged him. Except you're dismissing evidence that's there. Way more people voted uncommitted. It was concerted effort and campaign, like they said they're doing it. There was a huge numbers are wrong. What? Overrun by the Biden migrant crime. It's a new form of uh, vicious violation to our country. It's migrant crime. We call it Biden migrant crime, but that's a little bit long. So we'll just leave it. But every time you hear, hear the term migrant crime, you know where that comes from. Allowing thousands and thousands and actually millions and millions of people to come could be 15 million could be 18 million by the time he uh, gets out of office because hopefully the biggest risk we have is nine months that's a long time right. a lot of bad things can happen as i always say in speeches and rallies it's if you take the 10 worst presidents in the history of our country and you added them all up all of the problems all of the lousy jobs they've done you can add them all up it's not as bad as this one man has done for our country what he's done to our country is he's destroying our country uh, we were just talking before we were the general was saying i can't believe he can't believe what's happening he can't believe it's so sad last year almost half of all ice arrests were criminal aliens charged for more than it's so funny to be a part of the border patrol union and like be a part of the border patrol agent union and literally cuck yourself so hard to donald trump that you go up there and say, yeah, fuck this guy, Biden. He's, like, ruining the country. Meanwhile, Biden is like, please, can we pass a bill that gives you $20 billion extra dollars, including overtime pay, including more money to hire more Border Patrol agents and more fucking sick-ass cars that you can kill migrants with, like, you can run over migrants with. But it's crazy. I, this country is so dumb, dude. We are the dumbest nation on the fucking planet. I swear to God. It's nutty. 33,000 assaults, 3,000 robberies, 6,900 burglaries, 7,500 weapons crimes. This is all migrant crime. 4,300 sex crimes, 1,600 kidnappings, and 1,700 homicides and murders. These are the people that are coming into our country. And they're coming from jails, and they're coming from prisons, and they're coming from mental institutions, and they're coming from insane asylums, and they're oh. terrorists. They're being let into our, our country. And uh, it's horrible. It's horrible. And, you know, I know many of the leaders of these other countries that are doing it. And it's not just South America. It's all over the world. The Congo, a very big population coming in from jails from the Congo. You look at the jails now. You take a look at the jails throughout the region, but more importantly, throughout the world. 
they're emptying out because they're dumping them into the United States. And these guys try and make like, oh, isn't it wonderful? They don't have a clue. I think they're looking for votes. They're looking for something. Nobody's really been able to tell me how anybody could want it. You know, you're always in business. You always want to understand the other side. It's pretty cool that Biden 100% agrees with him, I think. It's pretty cool. And before people say, no, he doesn't, yes, he does. He absolutely does. Because the counter to this is this is all made up that immigrants are normal human beings and the notion that like immigrants are actually rapist criminals that are escaping prisons that come into this fucking country to invade the United States of America is deeply unserious and genuinely damaging to public discourse and also incredibly white supremacist, which is precisely what the Democratic Party said for the past fucking four years before Brandon became the president. And they were correct for saying that. Just so you understand. So yeah, when Trump turns around and says this and Biden's like, yeah, that's why we need to build the wall together, Jack. You're basically saying this guy's right, but he's not as committed to the cause as I am. And if you cannot comprehend how fucking unimaginably damaging that is, how unimaginably stupid that is, as far as like uh, cooking your reelection chances, I don't know what to tell you. I uh, you want to figure it out so you can do something that's good or bad, depending on what you're looking for. But nobody can explain to me, because everybody I speak to says how horrible it is. Nobody can explain to me how allowing millions of people from places unknown, from countries unknown, who don't speak languages. We have languages coming into our country. We have nobody that even speaks those languages. They're, they're truly foreign languages. Nobody <laughs> speaks them. Nobody speaks these languages. They're coming in, they're speaking Mexican, they're speaking pig Latin. Latin, but for pigs, folks. Nobody knows how to speak this language. And they're pouring into our country and they're bringing with them tremendous problems, including medical problems. As you know, we had Title II and we had different things. Yeah, famously. Famously, uh, they, they take the immigrants take advantage of our wonderful fucking social safety nets, you know, because we have a lot of them. Oh, it's such a fucking massive lie, dude. Have you seen what Nick looks like now? Uh, how long do you take? Oh my God. What the fuck? Take for you to drive there. Nick! He looks like he has like a sexy filter on or something. I saw you were walk like I saw someone walking across with wake and I did not know it was you. It's me. Why is your forehead red? Because I'm allergic to whatever she put on my head. I'm sorry. Yeah. You look great. Thank you, thank you. And you look very slim and I like the purple fit. Thank you. Bro, he looks like he's got the Giga Chad j filter on or some shit. What the fuck's happening? Yo, that's crazy. Finally, Nick got a black haircut. Bro, dude was in fucking Norway, okay? Like, give him, give him some, give him some credit, you know what I mean? He does actually have, like, that fade is, is a melanin fade, 100%. Like, at, at minimum, a Dominican barber touched that head of hair for the first time ever, I think. Minimum. For sure. Thank you. Oh, Nick! Look who decided to show up. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Getting ready to get back into shape and work out, you know? Yay! You look sexy as hell, bro. What the hell? When you saw you on stream last time coming back from Norway, you're in the beard in every direction. Just got a haircut. Now I just to be clean. He feels uncomfortable because of how hot he looks. That's so funny. My man. All right, let's get back to this racist piece of shit. Things to solve that problem, but they've terminated all of that. Even the judge couldn't believe it. The judge said, no, no, you can't do that. It would be horrible to do right that. Now. And he let it go. And But he said in six months it expires. And uh, it expired, and that's it. So I just think you're doing an incredible uh, job. Just one week ago, a beautiful 22-year-old nursing student from Georgia was barbarically attacked 
almost unrecognizable. While she was out on her morning run, she was a morning run. She was doing a keep herself in shape. She was a beautiful young woman. She was a great person, best nursing student there was. I spoke to her parents yesterday. They're incredible people. They're devastated beyond, beyond belief. But she was beautiful, just so beautiful in so many ways, and brutally assaulted, horrifically beaten, kidnapped, and savagely murdered. The monster that charged, uh, charged in the death is an illegal alien migrant who was led into our country and released into our communities by crooked Joe Biden. He's crooked. I took the name away from Hillary because she's no longer relevant, I guess. That's insane to make a joke while you're literally talking about, like, a horrific murder. Oh, my God. In the same breath, bro. What a deeply unserious man this is. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Surely it's great that the Democrats don't have a leg to stand on against this fucking narrative, by the way, because they are the ones who are championing the exact same bullshit. She was terrible, but he is, what he is doing is just unbelievable. Joe Biden will never say Lake and Riley's name, but we will say it and we will remember it. We're not going to forget her. It's been just a horrible story that we've had to live with for the last few days. It's hard to believe. And her parents are just, they can never be the same. Great people. Is just he more unhinged than before? Bro, he literally started off his fucking presidential announcement by saying Mexicans are rapists and drug dealers. No, this is just very much in line with the same fucking rhetoric. Like, there are areas where Trump has gotten... There are areas where Trump has gotten worse, but as far as, like, this stuff, like, he's always been the biggest racist. Just four days ago, an illegal alien in Louisiana was arrested for brutally raping a 14-year-old girl while holding a knife to her throat. And he then allegedly robbed a man who was getting out of his car in front of his home and repeatedly stabbed him in the face, in the back, in the face many, many times before police found this. It's lame as fuck, dude. It's just like uh, cowardly. Liberals. Nothing about fucking. What is this? New Cody, you cringe, you lose super Karens? Maybe. Um, I'll be honest with you. Like cowardly fucking liberals don't know how to address this kind of stuff because the talking points are not coming down from the Brandon camp. So I will. Every single group, every single subgroup in this population in the United States of America, of course, has the capacity to do crime. So you cannot look at singular anecdotes to be like, well, every single immigrant is doing this. That would be incredibly fucking racist. Which Republicans are. What you have to do is look at the data. And the data shows clearly according to many studies that investigated whether or not undocumented migrants are responsible for a larger share of crime than documented migrants or natural born U.S. citizens, undocumented migrants do less crime, significantly less crime per capita than natural born U.S. citizens. So this notion that like undocumented migrants are actually uh, doing massive amounts of crimes is fucking bullshit. But singular anecdotes, of course, are infinitely uh, more easy to digest than actual data, especially when people aren't routinely talking about the actual data. It's more personal. <laughs> Bro tip. <laughs> Bro, you got the worst fucking, you got the number one troop killer machine as your fucking username. Like, if you're going to be autistic about military equipment, please, like... You literally, you are, you are hamming on the greatest troop killer of all time. That's crazy. Motherfucker came in here and said, bro tip. Do you hate the troops, dog? What's going on? Might as well fucking change your name to Troop Exploder. How can you respond to someone who says that it is due to underreporting? Well, that's wrong. What do you mean underreporting? What do you think is going on? You think like people are dying 
in the hands of undocumented immigrants and and then someone turns around and goes yeah i i guess it's an undocumented immigrant we can't find him or something like are they just more evasive than the average person we're just keeping it a secret i'm on audio only and i just know he's talking about the osprey yeah Osprey underscore MX is this guy's name. Person standing in the middle of a street, all covered with blood, standing over the blood of the man he was attacking. Last year, a sadistic illegal alien criminal who was released into our country by Joe Biden was arrested for raping an 11-year-old girl and strangling her to death in Pasadena, Texas. And shortly before she was murdered, she texted her father that No, I'm undo I'm documented. Immigrants don't turn themselves in. That's the whole difference. Yes, rapists that are documented immigrants very famously always turn themselves in to the law enforcement authorities as opposed to the undocumented ones. No, he's uh, he was making a joke. But there are people who unironically believe dumb shit like that, so I don't know. I just... I can't even fucking tell if this dude is being serious or not right now. My brain is broken. Ugh. That someone was knocking at the door. He arrived home from work and found his daughter's body stuffed in a laundry basket underneath the bed. Horrible. Crooked Joe is the blood of countless innocent victims. It's so many stories to tell, so many Horrible stories. Three years ago, we had the most secure border in history. Brandon was saying it. The general was saying it. We had the most secure border. And people weren't coming because they knew they weren't going to get in. And we weren't promising free education, free medical, free everything. I mean, every, all the promises that are made, no wonder they come. I mean, uh, you look at what this governor, Newscum from California, isn't that his Yo! name? Yo! Yo! Wait, what? Oh, free everything. I mean, every, all the promises that are made. No wonder they come. I mean, uh, you look at what this governor, Newscum from California, isn't that his name, Newscum? Uh, what he's done to California is unbelievable. People are pouring in. They think they're going to get medical aid. And our soldiers are... Newscum! I love the idea that, like, one, California has no control over its borders uh, in the same way that Currently, I'm sitting at fucking Eagle Pass, where Texas has done a phenomenal job not listening to Joseph Robinette Brandon and has taken control of its own borders. It's like, which is it, dog? Is it supposed to be regulated at the federal level, which it should, by the way, obviously? Or is it like only Texas gets to control its own borders, but when California has uh, control over its own fucking borders, it's like, then it's not allowed. My point is, none of this shit is consistent. So... Obviously, don't try to fucking capitulate to these monsters. Vets aren't being taken care of, but people that come into our country illegally are. We ended catching. Yeah, new scum is a banger, I must admit. Unfortunately, I have to take the fucking L on that. In all of my years, I could not have come up with new scum. In the, and he just dropped it. He just dropped it. I really thought he had lost it a little bit with like desanctimonious because that shit was lame as fuck. But when he started calling him Meatball, I was like, oh no, he's back. But then he was like, actually, I never called him Meatball. And I was like, oh, that's lame. And then he just comes in and drops new scum. And I'm like, fuck, man, maybe he still got it. In release, we yeah, my goat is back. My goat is no longer washed. Built 571 miles of border wall, much more than I promised I'd build. And in addition, we purchased another 200 miles, and uh, they sold that, much of it, for five cents on the dollar. And it's the best wall, the same wall that you're using, right. because the governor's now building a lot of wall also. And it works. Walls work. Walls and wheels, I always said. It's one thing never gets huh. obsolete, a wall and a wheel. Everything walls else. Walls and wheels, folks. Both of these things that work. Walls and wheels. <laughs> That's awesome. My God. It was obsolete about two weeks after you come up with it. We got Mexico to give us 28,000 soldiers to take care of our border. We had the safest border in the history of our country. And now, outside of this area where Texas has done an amazing job, and in a pretty short period of time, they're going to have it all covered. 
Uh, they have just been incredible. What they, The operation that sh they showed me is nothing less than incredible. And I'll say this, uh, it's a military operation. I mean, we have a military, this is like a war. It's a military operation. So we had remain in Mexico, remember that? You can't come into our country, and Mexico agreed to it. And I'll tell you someday, I'll tell you why. Sorry. Bro, you're dividing with your divisive rhetoric. I'm not. I'm uniting the country under our holy Lord, Donald Trump. Safe third agreements, asylum bans, Title 42. The advice for dealing with Trumpies at this point that you have to interact with regularly, co-workers, family. Um, dude, I don't fucking know, really. Like, what do you say? Because for me, and I mean this in all sincerity, like, just vote for Joe Biden if you're a conservative. Like, he's just as fucking racist. <laughs> like... If you're voting for Trump over Joe Biden, you're just basically openly admitting like, oh, no, I, I like that he says the things that are racist. Like, it's not about the policy for me. It's about the energy. And he's just saying really awful shit. And I love that. Just don't talk to him about politics. I don't know. And rapid removals. But Title 42 was so important. Rapid removal so important. But the Honestly, like, my favorite thing to do, I love talking to Trump supporters, as you guys know. My favorite thing to do is just LARP. It can, technically, it can get wrong. Like, because they might say some really out-of-pocket shit if you LARP too hard. Like, they will feel comfortable, and then they'll start saying stuff that will make you want to throw up. So you just have to like LARP a little bit and then just like move the conversation quickly away to something where they can't just start talking about how they want to drown like Guatemalan babies in the Rio Grande River or something. Because like they will get there if they get too comfortable, they will unfortunately start saying some like Hitlerian nonsense. So don't go full hog, obviously. Sometimes directly might actually say Hitler was, uh, you know, not in the wrong or some shit. So you got to be watch out. You got to watch out. The best was remain in Mexico. You stay in Mexico. We had catch and release in Mexico. We had catch before that. It was catch and release a criminal and they released him in the United States. We had no more catch and release or catch and release. I avoid policies if I have to, because a lot of older family members will not be around forever, and I don't want to have somebody, someone hold a grudge against me for even seemingly defending Joe Biden or something else. They would perceive in this politics or, or sports world we live in. Sometimes I lay into them enough to make them never want to argue with me again. Yeah, I don't really have this problem, I'll be honest with you, because like my family is foreign, and the ones that live here are... The ones that live here are not Trump supporters, as you guys know, Jank. So. I get to engage with uh, people who are hogs recreationally on my own volition. <laughs> it's a little different if you're stuck. And as you guys know, I've duked it out with Jenk before in the marketplace of ideas. This was we released him in Mexico, and if you broke the law, we caught you, we deported you, or we did something else. But we were doing a great job, and uh, that's where it stood. And then we had an election that and Jenk won. Yeah, he destroyed me. He destroyed me by proving that in the state of California in Los Angeles, uh, no one ever gets charged criminally. We ended up getting many millions of more votes than we did. We did much better in 2020 than we ever even thought about doing it. His argument was identical to what Trump is doing right now, but for crime in general. You know? <laughs> like singular anecdotes that even... Uh, even with like a little bit of interrogation fell apart instantly.
2016, and very bad things happened. And from that moment on, it was a whole different ball game in Texas and all over. But the governor in Texas picked up the ball, and they've done an incredible job. And I'll tell you, it's an honor to be here. I brought some people here, some executives from New York, because they're, they're marveling at it, too. And uh, you're doing your job. Now we have to find out what's going on on the side, each side, because Arizona is not doing their job. You have a Democrat, liberal, or more than that, governor that probably doesn't want to do anything. So people are just pouring in through Arizona, and they're pouring in through uh, the, uh, the beautiful state, the once beautiful state. It's still beautiful, I guess, but they have a lot of crime and a lot of problems, California, because uh, the governor's not doing his job in California. He's doing a terrible job. He talks a good game. You know, he talks about how wonderful things are, but he's wrong. And they have a big outflow of people, people that pay taxes, people that don't commit crime. They're leaving. A lot of them are leaving. So I just want to thank the governor. I want to thank this incredible group of talent behind me. And we just went through a uh, — we just went through something very, very special. Uh, we, we did a, a tour, and we did it through all sorts of cameras. They're all over the place. I don't know. They're in the sky. They're in satellites. They're on the top of those light poles. They're all over the place. And you really have it done. And I'm very appreciative of it, Governor. You did a great job, and you're my friend. And it's an honor to have your support and your endorsement. <laughs> He was there the whole time. Oh, no. A lot of people were joking, like, oh, what happened? Where's Greg Abbott? Could he not fit the podium? Did they not have a wheelchair accessible ramp on the podium? Turns out he was there the whole time, dude. And likewise, me to you. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you, uh, President Trump, for being back in Texas. Uh, you know, uh, you being here. Damn, walls and wheels. Walls and wheels, baby. They always work. <laughs> My heart goes out to civilians who got trampled in a stampede and run over by Gazan truck drivers. I can't imagine the desperation. No